We installed two Victron Orion DC to DC chargers in our Ford Transit to charge our house battery bank from our engine alternator. Now, why two chargers, you may ask? Well, two chargers are simply going to charge twice as fast as one. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how we did it. Let's get started. Since our electrical system has already been installed in an enclosure in our van and we are retroactively adding alternator charging, I've made a backer board from three quarter inch ply that I'm going to use to mount everything to and then mount this in the enclosure so it's easier for all of you to see what I'm working on. I've also cut, drilled, bent, and painted a bracket to mount my second Orion over the first Orion since my lateral space is incredibly limited. I'm going to go ahead and mount my first Orion to the board. I'm going to mount the other Orion to the bracket with nuts and bolts. And then I'm going to mount the bracket to the backer board so the screw terminals can still be accessed. Then I'm going to tape the remote jumper that was in each of the Orion boxes to the top of the Orion so we don't lose it since it's easy to lose and the Orion won't function without it. Next, I'm going to mount my junction studs to the board. And I'm going to mount my Victron smart shunt to the board. And we will be making our wires as noted from the wiring diagram on our product page for this kit, which I'll link to in the video description. For each one, I'll cut, strip, crimp, and heat shrink a lug onto the wire as appropriate. And then I'll cut, strip, crimp, and heat shrink a ferrule onto the other end as appropriate. Now I have specific videos for crimping lugs and ferrules onto wires that I'll leave in the video description below and you'll end up with something like this. And now is a good time to go ahead and clean the lugs and ferrules to make a nice clean electrical surface. I'm gonna put my MRBF fuse holder on the input junction stud, and then the two gauge wire coming from the vehicle start battery on top of that and secure it in place. And then I'm gonna put the other MRBF fuse holder on the output junction stud. And the two gauge wire going to the Lynx distributor on top of that and secure it in place. Next, I'm gonna put the MRBF fuses on each of the MRBF fuse holder studs and then run the six gauge wire to each of the Orions from each of the fuses. Input to engine start battery stud and outputs to Lynx distributor studs. For the negative wiring on the smart shunt, the battery minus side will be connected to the Lynx distributor and the remaining junction stud here will be connected to the wire going to the engine start battery. Now the load minus of the smart shunt will go to the negative output of each Orion 
in the engine battery negative junction stud is going to go to the negative input of each Orion. Now I can go ahead and connect the VE direct cable to the smart shunt. This would have been way easier if I had done this earlier. And I can put the power wire on the smart shunt as well, and I'm just going to attach it right here. Now I can double check that all the terminals are nice and tight and there are no washers or heat shrink interfering with any of the electrical connections and make sure that all of our lugs actually have heat shrink. Now we can move this into the van, secure it to the wall, and connect it to the Lynx distributor. Negative to the negative bus bar, mega fuse on the fuse holder on the positive bus bar and then the positive wire to the bottom stud of the fuse holder and put the hardware back in place and tighten it down now i'll connect the ve direct cable coming from the smart shunt to the servo gx now if you want to see how the rest of this system is wired we have a full install video which i'll link to in the video description now, on to the starter battery connection. I just made the connections to our starting batteries and starting battery connection is going to be incredibly dependent on what vehicle you have. We have a 2021 Ford Transit with dual alternators and dual starting batteries. And after looking through all of the manuals and questionable information online, uh, we decided that the best way to connect the negative wire is gonna to be to this stud on top of the negative battery terminal of our starting battery bank. And then the positive wire is going to connect to the 175 amp uh, CCP connection on the side of the seat pedestal over here. Now there's a fuse inside of this box that's protecting this CCP stud over on this side, which is why we don't have a breaker or external fuse over here because it's protected from the fuse block inside. Now, if you're trying to connect up this same system on a Sprinter or a ProMaster or some Expedition truck or motorhome or whatever, there's usually some pretty good information out there about where to connect this stuff, but realistically, unless the vehicle manufacturer makes a specific recommendation, going to the vehicle starting battery with a fuse protecting the wire going to the Orion is going to be your best bet. Now that everything is connected, we can program our components with the Victron Connect app. I'm going to select one of the Orions, update the firmware, change the settings, download the settings, update the firmware on the second Orion, upload the settings from the first Orion to the second Orion, and our Orions are programmed. And for the smart shunt, I updated the firmware and set it as a DC energy meter instead of a battery monitor so that it can tell our Servo GX how much power our Orions are contributing to the system. And I'll put a cheat sheet to the settings I use to program our 24 volt Battleborn battery bank in the blog post for this video, as well as a cheat sheet for those of you with 12 volt battery banks. Since the Orions are now programmed, we can put our remote input bridge plug into each of the Orions so they'll be able to start charging once the engine turns on. 
Now with everything hooked up and programmed, we're going to take a look at the Touch 70 GX that's reading the data from our Servo GX to see what that power looks like. So we're up here at the Touch 70 GX that's getting its information from the Servo GX back in the back with everything connected and programmed. Here we can see that we're drawing 23 watts of DC power to power our overhead lights. And then we have a 22 watt AC load coming out of our inverter. And that's being shown as a negative 75 watt uh, calculation coming out of the battery bank. Now I'm going to turn the engine on and let you see what happens. And now we can see that the, uh, we have a negative reading here on DC power, which that's kind of a weird way to show that, uh, but it means negative DC power is actually pushing DC power back into the battery bank, which that's our alternator. So we can click into menu here. We can scroll till we find the smart shunt, which is in line between our dual Orions and our Lynx distributor. And we can see that our dual Orions is charging about Oh, just shy of 600 watts, which is expected for uh, our nearly full battery bank. Go ahead and click into that. Click into the device. Change our name to alternator instead of smart shunt, so it makes a little more sense on our screen. And now we can see that alternator is listed right up here at the top. Now on our pages section of the Touch 70. There's apparently going to be a firmware update that is going to be able to display an alternator charging source when using a DC meter like this, but it's not available just yet, but I'll update the pin comment when that's available. So that's how this is looking. And on the Victron Connect app, uh, we're also seeing that updated nearly 600 watts of charging power. That's pretty consistent with what we're seeing over there. Now there are all kinds of other options out there for DC to DC charging, but when I was making this kit, I was trying to make one that would work flawlessly for 95% of you watching this video. And this is what I'm going to be recommending until the new Orions come out, which when those come out, I'll be sure to make a new video reviewing those and add that to the video description below. So be sure to check there for updates. But if this setup is overkill and you wanna see a video showing a single Orion install, tap this video for that. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.